Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Great guys. We are finishing off with good works, dead works. Good works that God has prepared for us. Dead works that we need to repent of. Otherwise, one day standing before the Lord, whatever we built with our lives will be burned away. We, as, we will be saved as through fire. But no, God has so much more for us now in this phase of our lives. But when we end off, and we took looking today at Z after 24 Sundays. Everybody say, zoom into Zion with zeal. Now let's try that more intense. Zoom into Zion with zeal. Okay, it's for you to remember. That's why we are thinking of all these things. Okay. Guys, talking about Zoom. If we are saying at the end of the day, you've lived your life. You are doing what you believe God is saying you, you must do. But you giving him everything. There's something of, I can look at Jesus, I can look at the good works, I can look at the word, I can, I can hear a lot, but in zooming into, it has to do, I go beyond the seeing. I go beyond the seeing. Even the word of God says, Habakkuk says, I will stand and I will see what he is saying. So God said a lot of things. God said a lot of things through his word. But I need to see what he is saying. That's called insight. So there's a Christian walk that you can have. Yes, you gave your life to Christ. But then you just go with some superficial wara wara life. Going to heaven, but on earth you wasted your life. Or I could say, God touched my heart. Help me to look into, into, to zoom, into. That means it's not just... Beyond seeing that I have insight, but I choose to keep my focus on something. Hello. When you zoom into, then certain things become blurry. Hello. And certain things become clear with high definition. Is that true? So you decide, like that one song we say, that's a very good song, old song, for zooming into Turn your eyes upon Jesus. You know this song? Look full in his wonderful face. And, on. and the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And the things of this world will grow strangely dim. It will go out of focus. So I can focus on my hurt. I can focus on my opinion. I can focus on what I think I must do. I can focus on my challenge, my success, my failure, my whatever. I can focus on myself. I can, and it will be strangely dim. It will be not understandable what God is saying. Where is God? Where is God not? It is, it is not clear. But when you focus on God, even though you don't know what's the answer, not focus for an answer, not focus to understand everything, but focus on Him in the midst of whatever you're going through, then certain things will just become clear. Zoom into. But now He says, zoom into Zion with zeal. Zion is the place, it's the mountain of God where God is honored and Him alone. So you're allowed. Most probably on the mountain of God. But that's a place where God and God alone is honored. Amen. Psalm 24 says, who may, who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who can go on the mountain of the Lord? And that's what we're going to talk about. Because that mountain is a place where you have one passion. It's all about Him. Not about you. It's not first about your request. It's about him. Those can go on the mountain. Zoom into the place of how can I honor God in the midst of this? Zoom into that. How can I, how can I be a light in the midst of my circumstance? How can I praise God and worship him and have the joy of the Lord as strength, peace beyond all understanding, beyond all understanding, with his love as a driving force and fear has no hold on me. How can I get into that place? Zoom into the place of how to honor him. Not how to understand everything. 
How will I honor him with the good works that he has prepared for me? Not I don't, I, under, I must understand what exactly to do. You start to walk out in faith, in obedience. But you focus on him, focus on him. Zoom into Zion. Into the place where God dwells. Are you with me? Now, we have done a series 14 years ago, 13 years ago in the church of eight Sundays about a passage in Hebrews 13. No, Hebrews 12. But before we're going to look at that, the first scripture. Oh, oh let's, are we going to this one? All right. Before you put it up, Hebrews 12, he's talking about you run the race, eyes fixed, focus, zoomed in on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. Run the race with endurance, eyes fixed. If you run the race with God, but, and you run the race for God, but your eyes are not fixed, you cannot make a hamars. You want to do the Christian walk, you want to do the, that what God has for you. Lay down the sin and all the rubbish that entangles you. Yes, but then what? You stand there. No, get, run away from that rubbish. How? By running the race towards him. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in to Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. But that whole chapter is about discipline then. You say, okay, if you're going to run, gonna run the race, look at the discipline. Discipline in your life. You run the race, but you never practice. Oh, what a joke. You run the race. Okay, then he says discipline. For a lot of us, it's talking about the discipline and how a father will give a child discipline, but the father believes in you. That's why he disciplines you. The father loves you. That's why he disciplines you. Not because you have a mistake, first of all. No, 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 no. But because you have potential. Why? Because he accepted you as a true child. As a true child. Not an illegitimate child. Not a fake Christian. He accepted you as a genuine child of God. And that's why discipline is necessary. Unless you believe you're a fake. But if you don't believe you're fake, you will, you'll be there and say, God, sir, what must change in my life? Discipline. And then he says, later on in, the, in that whole passage of Hebrews 12, talking about, talking about Israel that came to the mountain when they came out as slaves with a slave mentality, they came to the mountain and God said, I brought you to myself. And then he brought discipline. And after he brought some discipline, the, the nation said, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't let God speak to us. God speak to Moses. Moses, you come and speak to us. But don't let God speak to us. And then Moses said, don't fear. Because God came to test you. Not to test you in the sense of your rubbish or your good. No, test in the sense of bring forth the quality that is in you. He wants to bring discipline on you. So it seems like your, but it's to bring discipline into your life. But still they said no. So for the discipline they said no. At the mountain. Where the fire and the smoke and everything was shaken. But now... In Hebrews, it says, you didn't come to that mountain. You came to a different mountain, Mount Zion. Now, today, there's a mountain that you need to climb. Today, there's a mountain where God said, I'm going to live on that mountain. I'm going to live in that mountain. The new Jerusalem will come down from heaven on that mountain. Hello? Do you want to be part of this whole process? How far are you willing to say, I will give God all the glory. doesn't matter what. It's not first for circumstances to change. It's not first for God to provide for you. It's not first for a lot of stuff to happen. It's first of all, how must I honor God in the midst of where I am and what I do? If that's the maturity in you, you will climb the mountain, Mount Zion. So there's eight facets about all of this. We did eight Sundays about this. Now we're going to do eight Sundays in 20 minutes. Hallelujah. The Lord's going to help us. But you can get the series. You can just ask the office. You can get the eight, eight teachings about, about all of this. It's, it's powerful how to understand this process of just me 
this guy on my way to hell to go and burn forever for all the rubbish I've done. And in myself, I'm rubbish. But before the Lord, something else. And then I will enter through the blood. You st- you p- a process started in your life because of the proof of the excellence of the offering of Christ. And the proof of the excellence is the blood of the Lamb. For an excellent destiny for your life. Now, we're going to work backwards. Okay. Verse 24, then 23, then 22. Okay, you with me? But please write it down. Verse 24 says, well, You came where? Not to that other mountain, but to Mount Zion. But what happened? You came to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, to the blood of the sprinkling that speaks of better things than that of Abel. Of better things than that of Abel. What are we talking about? That's where that production blood speaks. Come from. This verse. The blood of Abel talk about revenge. Talk about bitterness. Talk about hatred. Oh man, things can happen in our lives. And blood is spilt with thousands and hundreds of thousands. Yes, Gaza, Israel, Ukraine, wherever in the world. So many wars and rumors of wars and more will happen according to the word of God. But the the worst is not that there's... 200,000 that died at this stage with a lot of wars, different wars. That's not the problem. Not the 200,000, but maybe one, two, three million that Satan is getting into the place of revenge and bitterness and hatred and resentment and unforgiveness. How he's just saying, come, 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 come. You're welcome. All these demons are going to live in those millions of people. There's open doors in the hearts, in the lives of millions of people. Whoa, man. There's so many open doors for us. All the demons saying. Because demons are so welcome. Standing for the blood of Abel. And that is revenge. The blood demands revenge. So a leader can say, we are going to blast away with missiles and this or Hundreds of thousands of people, if you do this again, or if you do that again. Oh, the blood of Abel is going to speak. And he spoke for destruction, destruction, destruction of millions of people in the past. But there's a blood that will speak through the church that has higher authority. So much more, so much more. There's a blood through your life that speaks. And it's not your voice, first of all. It's the blood of the Lamb of God that can speak in through your life and bring a final authority into situations where demons need to flee because the blood has spoken. But where it spoke, doesn't matter what chamorse rubbish you did in your life. It has no higher authority than the blood of the Lamb. So when you surrender to God, what happens? You entered through the blood of the lamb. You were washed through the blood. So if you want any form of eternal life with God, it's the blood. Thank you that you forgive me. I ask for forgiveness. I forgive myself. I forgive others. Please forgive me, Lord, and accept me so that you can come into what place? Second point, the mediator of the new covenant. You come into a new covenant with God. You come into a covenant, a covenant that is a relationship that cannot be broken. And you come to know Jesus as the mediator. So the first one is the blood. You've written that down. On your way, you understand to go to the Mount, Mount Zion, God's mountain, forever and ever, to live with God there forever and ever. If you want to see something of that today, the blood. You did it with your own life, but now with other people also. You forgive them. You make sure you forgive them. Why? Because they deserve it. No, they don't deserve it. But you also don't deserve forgiveness. You deserve to burn in hell forever. But by His grace you are forgiven. And so by grace you will forgive others. Through the blood. Amen. And that brings you in a relationship that somebody that is called the mediator. You come to know the Son of God, that He gave everything so that you can be in His presence and call the God of eternity Father. So you come into a relationship with a mediator. That's the second point. Go back one. 
Then, to the spirits of just men made perfect, of righteous men made perfect. You came to the spirits. That sounds freaky. Now, the devil tried to call it, uh, you can call to the ancestors. You can, all oh, those chamors rabbis. You cannot even speak to the ancestors. Man, that's demons that present themselves as your grandma and your this and that. Why you think your grandma is a demon? Why are these guys calling on, on the ancestors? There is no ancestor that can speak to them. But it's demons that can present themselves. <laughs> are you with me? But what is now? You, you came to the spirits of just men made perfect. That's people who gave their lives to Christ. Where your spirit was perfect. When you gave your life to Christ, your spirit was reborn. You are a spirit. You have a soul, personality, will, emotions, intellect. You live in a body. Baboon, only body and soul. Human being, body, soul, and spirit. But because, because with mankind, God blew of his spirit into you that he didn't do with an animal. But your spirit died. God said, when you eat from that tree, you will surely die. What happened? They ate it from the tree and boom. That, no, no, no. They were hiding. But their spirit died immediately. And we are dead. Our spirit is in a state of death until the day you give your life to Christ. And Jesus said, you need to be reborn. How can we be reborn? No, your spirit. You gave your life to Christ. Your spirit was reborn, but your spirit is perfect. 2 Corinthians 5. I know you write it down. You're a new creation. Everything became new. Everything became new. You look at some Christians, definitely a lot of stuff didn't become new. Some Christians, they are having some horror life, sometimes even worse than some guys out there in the world. Because your soul is not saved. Work out your salvation. So you must work out Oh, that's a lot of theology, but uh, you must work out the salvation that is in your spirit. Your spirit is perfect. Your spirit is perfect. When your life gave your life to Christ, everything became new in your spirit. Holy Spirit testifying your spirit that you are a child of God. Romans 8. Holy Spirit in your spirit cry out, Abba, Papa. Romans 8. Spirit to spirit, deep calling unto deep. That is in worship. If you know who you are, if you know who you are, that's in your spirit. Okay, but now what is this? Do the spirits of just men made perfect? It's people that start to understand how to live from their spirit. There's a spirit man. Paul says, I don't want to know all the rubbish. I don't want to know all the issues among you guys. But I want to know about Christ and him crucified. I want to know about your relationship from your spirit with God. Hello? So if you gave your life to Christ through the blood, you came through the blood. The blood of the Lamb. Then you had a re start to get a relationship with a Redeemer. You know His grace and His grace alone. And you come to know Jesus Christ as the mediator that brought you into this covenant. And if you understand that, you start to live from your spirit. Not from your soul, personality, your emotions. You start to grow up where it's not about you, it's about him. You start to grow up. Hello? You're going to grow as a child of God to become a mature son of God. Or you're going to grow as a child to become childish. You're not going to stay the same. So the more you live... But you don't get to the word. You don't get into prayer. You don't get to God. You're going to grow if you like it or not. But either you will grow up or you will become childish. One of the two. Bottom line. You can when you can this, and you can <coughs> when you are two months old. When you are 20 years old. And you wear and then everybody must give you. <coughs> they say something is really wrong. Are you with me? But that's unfortunately some Christians. They walk and then they later they expect somebody to come and feed and change and do all the stuff is for them. Otherwise God is not love. <laughs> it's time, tell your neighbor it's time to grow up. Hey, say it. Okay, what are we saying? Great. 
The blood, the mediator, the spirit man. You live from your spirit. Then you come to the, what's before that? Spirit of judgment made perfect. You came to God, the judge of all. Ish, ish, ish. There's some guys. They're going to stand before the judge and demons. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. In that day, they will confess Jesus is Lord. Every tongue, every knee will bow. And then they will go and burn in hell forever. And then there's others. They gave their lives to Christ. But then they water watered right through their lives. They will stand before God. And what they've done with their lives, the good works of that they thought was good works, everything will be burned away. What a waste of a life. But they will be saved as through fire. But then there's people that will not just stand before the judge then, that day, but tomorrow, now, as we are speaking, that you allow God as a judge to show you this is hamors in your life, that is right. God, forgive me for this. I walk away from that. While you are sitting here repenting, while you are sitting here going through, not the demon of condemnation through religion. No, but the Holy Spirit, that brings conviction of sin. And then I walk away from it into the truth that set me free from that what is rubbish. And after this half an hour, normally, you can walk out here and you are set free from a lot of stuff. If you have an interaction with the word and you believe this is not a story, but this is a life. This is words that brings life. Death to my flesh and life to the quality that God has placed in me. You are still here. He will come to start to know the judge. You want to live on the mountain of the Lord. You want to see the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven. You want to understand the habitation of God. God chose Mount Zion. God chose the new Jerusalem. But the new Jerusalem is... The nations. God looked at heaven and he wanted more. He wanted you and me. More than what he saw in heaven. He was, it was you and me. And he dreamt in heaven about something more. And that is a home that he will call the nations. Me and you. Oh, come on. Are you with me? Our father's home. God the judge, allow him. Allow it through people. Allow discipline. Allow discipline. To, not for people to tell you everything you do wrong, but so that you grow up. So that you can grow up. Amen? You need that spiritual coach, cell leader, pastor, somebody, mentor in your life that must speak to you. And not just give you a hand and just encourage in that way, but also bring discipline if you believe you have potential. Right, before that, what are we talking about? The church are the firstborn who are registered in heaven. Who is registered in heaven? It's like an army in a, in a nation that are registered as soldiers, as corporals, as people with stature, with, as people with a savvy, what do you call that, with an intellect and the skill, knowing how to have, do warfare, how to protect the nation, how to be clever enough to work as a group of people, where it's nothing about that soldier, it's about his family, it's about the nation, it's about his country, he will give his life. He registered and said, yes, sir. I will not argue, sir. I will not wara wara. I will do what is told. If I understand it or not, if I see it or not, if I understand the strategy against the enemy or not, there's a company of people that God is going to raise up in the church. That's a company of people registered in heaven. The church of the firstborn. Who is the firstborn? Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ has a company of people that he will raise up, that will mature. That is not always about, that is not about their needs, their feelings. When they feel to worship, then they worship. When they don't feel, when the temptation is, temptation is there, then it's finished. When, is somebody walking away from their old self? Your greatest enemy, not the devil, but the old you. That's the biggest enemy. Because only the old rubbish you can give hell authority to do things in your life. Oh, the devil is not the greatest enemy. But you walk away from it because you grow up to become part of this company. You register, if I can say in the English like that. God, I want to, reg I, I want to, 
I don't want to register. Uh, can you register me? God says, then first you need to grow. But as you grow and get rid of your old self, then you can become part of this company that will do great, great, great exploits for God. Romans 8 says, those who are led by the spirits are the Spirit are the sons of God. Those who have the Spirit, that's children of God. But those who are led by the Spirit is a different company. That's sons of God. Children of God, they have their needs and God will supply in your needs. Because child, you present yourself as a child to be dependent on the Father. But when it's all about Him, less of me, then I become a son of God in the Son of God. Let's say, a son of God. In the Son of God. How? Because it's less of me, more of Him. How do you come into the process? Through the blood. You saw what Christ has done? And then the word says, you were crucified with Christ. Then you died with Christ. You were buried with Christ. You were raised with Christ. You are seated with Christ in heavenly places. And from the heavenly perspective into your situation, God says, your life is hidden, hidden in Christ. He will not just give it to you on a plate. You must find your quality, excellent life in Christ. Are you still with me? And when you find it in the Son of God, then you become a Son of God. The child of God and the Son of God, a Son of God, all go to heaven. No, no, no problem. But this Son of God making you a Son of God, talking about maturity, maturity to be of a certain company of people. The church are the firstborn. Those company that will have the open heavens. When they speak, heaven opens. And what is in heaven, so it will be on earth. It's the guys that when they pray, things happen. It's the guys that have a certain statue. When they enter the place, the atmosphere change in the place. God wants to make you one of that, those. Ah. Oh. But say, God, I, I, I give myself. I want to be registered as one of those guys. Amen. Yes. The church of the firstborn. The, to the general assembly. Who's the general assembly? Go back one. Verse 22. At the end of the day, we're talking about Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels and the general assembly. All the millions, I don't know if there's trillions, but millions of angels and the general assembly, who, who are they? The worship before the throne, the, the worship from heaven, the sounds from heaven. You are united as the assembly with the angels before the throne of God. That's your place where you live. That's the place when you start to worship in a song where you enter into that place. You start to understand how to live from that place where you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. That sounds freaky, but at the end of the day, guys... Colossians 3, 1 to 3 says, Think upon the things that are above and not here on earth. The more you not become super spiritual, but the more you, you come into the place to walk with Christ into your situation. You don't see the, the situation where you want to slaughter that guy or just want to do something or you want to say something. But you say, God, where are you in this room? Where are you in this fight that I experience, in this frustration, in this fed upness, in this depression in this negativity where are you lord are you here hello are you still here yes. we're talking about heavenly jerusalem now before that the company of millions or trillions i don't know of angels and the general assembly so quickly go with me on my way to hell burn forever through the blood Amazing grace, I enter. I come to know the mediator, how I can go to the Father, what Jesus has done for me. Wow, wow, wow. Crucified, died, raised, seated with him. Mediator. And I realize, whoa, what happened to me? 
perfect, my spirit made perfect. From my spirit, I put the word, I live from my spirit, not born from my soul. I live from my spirit and I grow in Christ. I grow in Christ, spirit made perfect. That makes me part of some group or company of people. I know the church are the firstborn, that I will do exploits. Where I go, they will be changed. They will be changed in the atmosphere because of who I am. Amen. That bring me into the place, oh, sorry, just before that, I bring it before the judge, before the judge, that I'm willing to change. I'm willing to change. I'm willing for people to say, stop that rubbish, man. Get your attitude right. Don't sleep in church. You know? Do that. Do that. Are you all with me? Set up straight rather. If you want to sleep, just smack yourself every 10 minutes. Okay. Hello? You come before the judge, you're willing to change. It's not about, oh, there's already again something that I did wrong. You know, oh, I'm always in trouble. You know, get out of that. Become a Jew and say, God, where must I change? What must I do different? So that I can have a better life, a quality life, an excellent life with you. If I allow that, this, then yes, you're part of the company. This company that will do great exploits for the Lord. That will bring you into the place of you understand the open heaven. And you're part of the assembly with angels worshiping God. You understand from a heavenly place life. It's not just the earthly life. And you're a product of circumstances, product of what's happening on earth. Good morning. Are you still here? Great. What do you do on a Saturday evening? Don't tell me you're going into the rest of the Lord when the pastor speaks. You know? Ay, ay, ay. You see somebody sleeping, eyes closed, you beat him up, but do it in love. Okay? <laughs> then it's not a sin. Okay. Now, and then if I understand this place, my brother, my sister, understand what God dreamt about in heaven and that it can come on earth and through my life, that what is God's will in heaven can become a reality through me, can become a reality. Then what's happening? You come to, came to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, the heavenly Jerusalem. You know there's a Jerusalem on earth. Oh, man. Hell is knowing, hell knows, and all the demons know what is going to happen when heavenly Jerusalem is coming down. Whoa. And so what earthly Jerusalem they can destroy? One of the cities, uh, that is one of the keys, I mean, the, the key city for Christianity in that sense where a lot of, most of the stuff happened for the Muslims, for the Jews, all three major religions in the world. Jerusalem. And where is the biggest chaos? Jerusalem. You know what's the meaning of Jerusalem in Hebrew? The habitation of peace. The place where peace dwells. But the new Jerusalem is not the physical Jerusalem in Israel. No, it will come down from heaven through the church. Through the church, the company of people being raised up into maturity on earth as it is in heaven. And the final dream of heaven is the new Jerusalem that will come down where? On Mount Zion, the place where God is honored. Where he alone, he alone, he alone is honored. But you can establish that platform. I want to call, I want to say Mount Zion is like the platform for the new Jerusalem. And on the platform that is called Mount Zion, God says, that's where I am. And that's where I want to play, stay. That's where I want to be. That will be my habitation. The word says, God dwells on the praises of his people. Die Heere loof, uh, die Heere bly onder die lofsange van sy volk. God is there where he is praised. That's, that's where he want to stay. That's where he want to live. And you establish something of that platform for God. The more you worship him, honor him through your lifestyle, through your song, through your words, through your relationship, through all that. You, 
You created that platform in Bloemfontein, at the university, at the workplace, in the city, in the, in, the, in the nation. You create that platform that is called Mount Zion for the new Jerusalem to come down. That's very spiritual that I'm talking about. But at the end of the day, it's a concept that we need to understand, man. Are you, are you, are you, are you still here? So for this whole thing of coming onto the mountain... And on that mountain, you have that platform tomorrow that even though you feel like giving up, you will honor him. The best example, Habakkuk. Habakkuk. Okay, it's uh, the prophet in the Old Testament. Chapter 1, he's throwing a hand and saying, God, I'm crying out to you and nothing happens. I'm screaming to you. I'm, I'm crying out. I'm, and you do nothing. Oh. And then he says, I'm going to stand in the right place. He says, I will stand on my watchtower and I will see what you are saying. I will see what you are saying. I'm waiting for inside so that I can zoom in, zoom in, zoom into the place where you are. And then chapter 3, talking about Zion, when he zoomed in, what is that, what does he say? Even though circumstances don't change, still I will worship you. I will still worship you doesn't matter if circumstances change. So I can see the circumstances and I want to scream out about circumstances. But then I will stand to zoom into that what God has for me. And let all the other things become dim. So that when I see nothing changed, still I'm zoomed in to honor him in spite of, in spite of. And that is creating the platform of Mount Zion, the place where God is honored. Where God give you a platform to honor him tomorrow, today, now, when you are tired and you are sleepy because you study till one o'clock. I know. Oh, one o'clock. You're still the opportunity. And honor God. Create that platform in your life. Not the platform. Because there is a mountain. There is a mountain which Satan will go with you. And he will show you the visions. He will show you the kingdoms of the world. There is a mountain. He will take you there. You don't go onto the mountain of the Lord. You don't work with the Holy Spirit into that. He will. In a very. I don't say with a cable car. But he will organize that you very easily. Will be able to get onto that mountain. When you and the devil will stand. And he will even quote scripture, like he did with Jesus. You choose what mountain you're going to be. Getting to that place where God is honored alone, where the enemy cannot come. Are you still with me? Are you still with me? Now it says, zoom into Zion with zeal. Now this zeal is talking about, we can take the next scripture. He who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless rubbish deed. Every deed that is not from God. And purify for himself his own special people. Zealous for good works. There's a zeal in you to do that what is right. How? There's a zeal, there's a zeal my brother, my sister, that is from hell. And that is Peter. He has a vision. He's excited. He has a passion. And he said, nobody will kill you, Jesus, over my dead body. My translation. But nobody will kill you. And for that zeal in you, I want to do this for God. And God says, get behind me, Satan. Whoa. He didn't say that to the sinner. He said it to the guy that said, I want to do this for God. I want to do this for God. So Peter said, and God said, get behind me, Satan. So there's a zeal, there's a passion if you want to do something for God that is very, 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 very dangerous. That God said, get behind me, Satan. <coughs> you must get rid of that thing, that zeal. Now you find Zechariah 4, he says, not by power, not by might. What is that? Not by that zeal, not by the power that zeal can give. Not by power, not by might, but by the zeal that comes from God himself. By my spirit, says the Lord. Not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit. That zeal that comes from the spirit of God. You will wait for the Holy Spirit. And when he come upon you, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. You will get that zeal. You get, will get that strength. You will get that inner dynamic to go and you will be my witnesses. As a doctor, as a businessman, as an engineer, you will be my witnesses. If you understand the zeal of God, the zeal of God. 
So that must be part of life, your life in all the good works that you do, for it not to be burned away and have a hell of a waste of a life on earth, but to have a life with meaning that for eternity you will remember. That by His grace you use some of the opportunities God gave you to do His good works. Uh, are you here? Zealous for good works, the words of God says through Timothy. Zealous for good works. You have a passion to do the thing for God, but you better hear it from the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, that zealous, exciting, passionate, good works, God says, get behind me, Satan. That's really a waste. No, 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 no. So zoom, not into the thing you want to do. Zoom into Zion, into the place where you can honor God. That is now immediately. Your strategy for the right good works, for that what is pure, for that what is right, that what is from God, your strategy right now is at this moment, you choose to focus on God. That is called worship. Because you don't know. Not at the soccer game, you sit there and you feel, you want to go to sleep, you know. Oh, yeah, how long? Is <coughs> not at the soccer, not at the spring box. Not at the Bafana, Bafana, not at the. Ladies, not for you guys, hey. What, 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 what spot do you do? The hockey. Of the fire piles. What, what is? Knots, daar gaan ons weer. Okay, what's vier peltjes? Darts. Okay, what are we talking? Zealous for good works. Zealous for good works. That what is from God. But you must find it from him. Zoom into Zion with zeal. Next, next scripture. We're nearly going for Lenny. Make not my father's house a house of merchandise. What is that? A marketplace. A sales shop. Don't do that. You must have a zeal for your father's house. You must have a zeal for your daddy's house. Father God's house. You must have a passion for that. But don't make it a marketplace. How? I mean, you know what, what Jesus did. No? That's the only place that he kind of get, got aggressive. Where they sold the doves, they sold the stuff, all the stuff. And he threw over all the tables. But the doves were not as a temptation. The doves was to be slaughtered or to be offered. The, the, the things that they sold was for the kingdom. You know? Hello? But what happened... Today, it's not like you putting up a stall here in front of the church and want to sell all your stuff just for your own gain. It's about your prayers. God's house will be a house of prayer. But you come, if you come with this marketplace prayers, sales shop prayers, and you are just with this sale, with God, help me with this, help me with that. I trust you for that. Give me this, give me that. And you give your time and offering so that for what, what you sow, you will reap. And it's a deal. Uh, it's the wheel and deal prayers. It's the wheel and deal actions. It's the wheel and deal stuff in your father's house. No, but there must be a zeal, a passion to do his will. There must be a zeal and a passion to worship him, to honor him, to pray. And not just pray for the goodies. Not the marketplace prayer. But to say, God, in spite of whatever, I'm going to honor you. In spite of whatever, you are my life. In spite of whatever, you are the one that I'm going to live for. Finish. That is the son of God in his father's home. Amen. So may God help you like it was with the son of God. Go on, you can go on. And his disciples remembered that it was written in the Holy Scriptures, the zeal, fervor of love for your house will eat me up. I will be consumed with jealousy for the honor of your house. I will be consumed. There will be a fire in you to honor God. There will be a fire in you that Bloemfontein must honor God. That all the chamors that they want to teach education-wise for the kids, that it will not happen. But the children, even though they put that rubbish out there, the children will just say, we're going to honor God. 
How many, how many athletes said, stood up for Christ when the biggest hamors happened there at the Olympic Games? You remember? How many Christians suddenly just identified and to say, you know, I do this for Jesus. I do this for God. When the world wanted to just throw all the hamors. So you will create, that fire will be in you. Zoom into Zion with zeal. Zoom, get the focus in how can you honor God through your life into the place, the platform, the mountain of the Lord. Hello? With a passion, with a zeal, with a fire that is in you. You have a fire to tell people about Christ. When last did you really tell people about Christ? Oh, I know I'm supposed to do that. That's demon of religion. No. May you have a zeal for Father's house. Because that guy and that guy that must give his life to the Lord, that's a living stone. There's a other stone. That's a rolling stone that must come in. That, hello? Living stone, living stone. You must become part of the building, the home of Father, the house of God. You are consumed. You have a passion. You have a zeal in you for his house. So that through your good works, whatever God has called you to do, you're bringing the bricks. Now you're cleaning the place. Now you're bringing the... But uh, what is the cement? The daga. The daga. The daga. The daga. Okay. You, hello. Each one has a different part to play. But the stones must come in from rolling stone to living stone. Amen. May God help you. May God help you, my brother, my sister. I'm going to rather stop here. Hallelujah. And... Um, I want to leave this passion with you to say, after 26, 24 Sundays, good works, dead works. That good works from hell. That good works that you think you're going to do. Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. But if you've done it with God, if you can zoom into, because I don't know, you don't know. We don't understand many things that God wants to do in us and through us. And always, what must we do in all the situations? But just now, just tomorrow, you zoom into the passion to say, God, I will honor you in spite of. I will honor you in spite of. I will honor you in spite of. I will not become fed up. I'm not just going to be frustrated. I'm not just going to be negative. I'm not just going to go into this anxiety or depression or all this stuff. Is into this tension. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to compromise and have this walk anymore. You zoom into the place where God is honored. Finish. And you will see the passion rise up. And you will know what to do. You will know. And the good works that you will do, they will be an open heaven from heaven. And God's dream will come down through your life. God's dream will come down and become a reality through your works, through your deeds, through what you do, through your job, through your studies. That what is from heaven will come down. It will come down. But the, please apply these principles. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. God, come and do it in our lives, please. God, I pray every, that every man, woman in this place, that your holy fire will be upon them to burn away everything that is rubbish, to burn away everything that is not from you. Please, Lord. Help us to understand how we can enter through the blood. How we can come to know our mediator, Jesus Christ. Who we are with the quality that you've placed in our spirit. Let's focus on God. Help us, Lord. And if we need to be set free from demons, that we will understand how to surrender. That the judge, the one with the final authority, will have the final say in our lives. In Jesus' name. God, because we want to be, grow up, to become mature, mature, to be part of this company of people that do great exploits, that earth will change where we come, where we move, where we have our being, because of your presence in and through us. We want to see in the Spirit, Lord, and be part of the worship that is from heaven. So that the new Jerusalem, the habitation of peace, the place of reconciliation, that we will understand the new Jerusalem, what it's all about, Lord, and Mount Zion. We want to live there because you chose Mount Zion and the new Jerusalem.
as your habitation. And we will want to be with you in our Father's home, the New Jerusalem and Mount Zion. We choose that, Lord, and create in us the zeal, the fire to do your will, the fire for your word, a desire for your word, the fire to deal with the rubbish in our lives. Let your consuming fire burn away all the destructive fires in our lives. Do that for every man, every woman in this place. We trust you for that, Father, that you come and do that in Jesus' name. And that name alone. And all say, Amen, Amen, Amen.